Welcome to another episode of Project Combat, a series that encourages community discussion and provides Jagex with in-depth feedback that can guide fundamental improvements to RuneScape's combat system. Combat is a core part of the RuneScape experience, but the evolution of combat update is now a decade old. EOC's age and poorly defined foundational design are really starting to show for both players and developers. But it's difficult to have meaningful conversations on how to actually improve combat because there's differing opinions of what makes combat fun. So much of a combat system's design is subjective. The evolution of Combat Update's high-level goal was to introduce complex, engaging combat that enables better PVM design. EOC has changed quite a bit from the original beta, but is it actually meeting its goals? This episode will explore the very hot topic of Switchscape, but we're going to go much deeper than that. Design philosophies like combat complexity and boss design will all be explored in this episode. But before we get into it, I have to make a quick disclaimer. The points I go over in this episode make a lot more sense from the perspective of an average player. If you're watching this as an already highly skilled PVMer, remember that a new or average player's experience struggles a ton with complexities that may seem like a non-issue to you. Some of what I say doesn't fully apply to very end game encounters, but if players lose interest in the game before they reach that point, something isn't working. And Jagex is less likely to make truly difficult PVM encounters because there's less people looking forward to it. So, Switchscape. It's brought up on Twitter, Reddit, Discord, and Twitch. Players in favor of Switchscape might be thinking, switching rewards active gameplay and should be increasing a player's DPS, and you don't have to switch if you don't want to. Switching adds skill expression to the game, and we shouldn't be dumbing the game down by making switching less efficient or easier. Players who don't like Switchscape might say, Switching feels cumbersome and frustrating. I don't want to deal with it. Switching isn't fun or satisfying, and I'd rather see it replaced with something more meaningful. Discussions about Switchscape often lead to player suggestions like passive ring stands or merging items to reduce switching, or even more aggressive ideas like preventing switching during combat. I've seen years of discussion on Switchscape, and more recently Jagex has created rewards which remove some switches, like Ring of Vigor, which players seem to appreciate a lot. But there's a fundamental problem with discussions around Switchscape and how to solve it. Switching is not the problem. The high-level design of gear switching is not problematic. Switching actually has a ton of cool opportunities to be fun and skill expressive if implemented correctly. Old school RuneScape players don't complain about switching despite it being abundant in PVM encounters and a core component of their combat system. Games like Lost Ark have popular classes whose entire identity is switching weapons. Even League of Legends has champions whose identity is weapon switching. Switching gear itself is not the problem. So why is Switchscape such a hot topic if it's the wrong topic? Really, these conversations are about player mastery of combat. The motivation behind a player's opinions on Switchscape reflects their vision of what combat mastery should look like in RuneScape. Players in support of many Switches see the increased complexity and input as a player mastery component. They feel players who have mastered Switches deserve higher DPS because they're more skilled at combat. Players who don't like switching find the added complexity of switches isn't fun to keep up with, and they'd rather not have to deal with the increased inputs because those inputs don't feel meaningful to them. What we should really be discussing is RuneScape's complexity, actions per minute, and depth, which together describe what mastery looks like. Switchscape is just an application of that conversation. The fundamental issue is RuneScape's player mastery experience is very poorly defined. EOC didn't actually introduce much depth to combat. Ironically, EOC is actually very similar to the combat system in Old School RuneScape. I'll prove this in detail later on, but first, let's break down our definition of player mastery. We'll start with defining complexity, which will break up into comprehension complexity and tracking complexity. Comprehension complexity describes how difficult it is to learn and understand something, 
if the rules of the game are unintuitive or confusing, you have something that's very complex. For example, if an ability tooltip is unclear or uses weird words, the comprehension complexity is probably too high. Tracking complexity describes how many things you as a player need to keep track of, for example your current health. If we were to hide a player's health bar, they would have to memorize their health and mentally track what their health is as they take damage and heal. This would definitely make a boss fight much harder, but you can quickly see why that wouldn't be very fun. Generally, you want to make it easy and intuitive for players to understand what's going on around them. Complexity in general is a barrier. Players spend time figuring things out, but if doing so is unintuitive or frustrating, it can quickly turn players off a game. If a boss fight is only difficult because there's a lot to keep track of, and the mechanics are confusing to understand or unintuitive, it's probably a frustrating experience. If a player dies and they aren't entirely sure why, or they feel like their death was BS, that might suggest complexity is too high. A really key point to remember, you can reduce tracking and comprehension complexity, but still make a boss fight very challenging. Actions per minute, or APM, describes the number of inputs that you have to make. On its own, the level of APM doesn't give us enough information about whether a design is fun. There are fun, high APM designs, and also terrible ones. High APM can feel amazing when each of those inputs feels meaningful. High APM can also feel like a chore when those individual inputs are meaningless, or you feel like you're fighting with the user interface rather than actually playing the game. Depth describes what happens when a player evaluates a game state and then makes a decision. The greater the depth, the more possible decisions a player can make, and those decisions can lead to different game states. Depth highlights skill expression by differentiating between players who make great decisions and players who make not so great decisions, based on the game state. We're going to look at League of Legends as an example, and take the summoner spell Flash. The tooltip for this spell reads, blinks your champion a short distance towards the target location. That's it. Very clearly, Flash is low complexity. There's nothing else to figure out beyond what the tooltip says. But Flash has incredibly high depth because the player can use this tool in so many different ways. Flash can be used to close a gap between you and your target, dodge a threat, traverse over otherwise impassable objects, reposition to land a skill shot at a better angle, and even fake out your opponent. Flash also has a 5 minute cooldown, meaning players have to also decide whether using Flash is worth the cooldown. In other words, Flash has a meaningful cost, a very long cooldown. Flash is just a tool though. Other game mechanics interact with what Flash offers players to create even deeper experiences. This spell is a huge source of very fun, very high moments when playing League of Legends. To really grasp the difference between complexity and depth, think about those crazy challenges where someone plays a game using a Guitar Hero controller instead of a keyboard. What the player really did was increase complexity by resetting their knowledge of how to input commands. But the Guitar Hero controller didn't add any depth. It doesn't change the player's decision making or possible game states once they've memorized the inputs. But what does all this have to do with EOC and Switchscape? When the Evolution of Combat update launched, it introduced a ton of complexity to combat, and it increased APM but it didn't actually add that much depth. The complexity introduced by EOC didn't add much to the combat experience. It also turned a ton of people off combat because it was just too complicated. Combat felt like a chore because inputting an ability every three ticks didn't feel particularly meaningful. Learning the best ability rotation was entirely unintuitive despite there being an objectively correct order of abilities. The complexities of EOC became such a problem that Jagex needed to address it, and they did, by introducing Revolution. Revolution reduces complexity and APM. Players can look up a predetermined Revolution bar and know that they're doing decent DPS. They spend a lot less time figuring out the right order of abilities and remembering the order to use them in because Revolution does that all for you. But Revolution is just a band-aid fix, 
it was meant to be a stepping stone to full manual, but a lot of players just don't find the idea of full manual appealing or fun, and they never intend on learning it. So Revolution became this standard for an average player. It lets players ignore much of the complexities of EOC, but those complexities still exist. Players who spent the time to learn those complexities and make use of full manual can output notably more DPS than a player who just uses Revolution. Fundamentally, EOC abilities and rotations are incredibly complicated, unintuitive, and actually not very deep. This is especially true for the early to mid-game experience. While newer weapons like Fractured Staff of Armadil and the new bow add some depth to rotations, these experiences are locked to players already heavily invested into the game. So the majority of players just let Revolution do its thing while occasionally using a Threshold or Ultimate manually. This is why discussions around Switchscape aren't meaningful. Switching is just another example of increased complexity and APM, but not much depth. Switchscape's problems are that it's high complexity, high APM, and low depth, but that exists on top of a base system which has the exact same problem, so we can't meaningfully address Switchscape's problems without looking at the whole system. I want to make a very key point on Switchscape discussions. Most players actually have very similar opinions on player mastery despite disagreeing heavily on Switchscape. Players in favor of switching who don't want to see it nerfed or removed feel this way to preserve combat mastery. They're worried removing these things will make combat too easy and diminish the effort that they put into learning combat. They want a challenging combat experience with a learning curve that lets them express their skill and mastery of combat. The players who hate switching and want to see it removed or reduced feel switching is unnecessary comprehension complexity and higher APM with very little depth to it. That lack of depth and added comprehension complexity is just not fun. The players who dislike Switchscape are not necessarily asking for the combat mastery curve to become easier. It's the dislike of comprehension complexity and meaningless high APM that fuels a hatred for Switchscape. Most players do want combat with high depth. Ironically, fighting to retain the current combat system's complexity actually limits the difficulty of future PVM content. The popularity of Revolution proves that players want to minimize a combat system's complexity, but there's a huge DPS disparity between players who take the minimal complexity approach and those who don't. But far more players prefer less complexity, so Jagex is forced to use Enrage systems to deal with that DPS disparity. That means future PVM content will either be too easy for existing endgame players, or will have to come with an Enrage system, because Jagex isn't going to commit resources to PVM content that the majority of the players can engage with. Let's break down specific examples of how APM, complexity, and depth apply to RuneScape. First, we'll talk about APM. There's a common argument I hear. Things like 4-tick auto-attacking and switching are high APM, and high APM requires skill. Therefore, players should be rewarded with more DPS if they're willing to perform higher APM. This is the exact same argument old-school RuneScape players use to defend 1-tick prayer flicking. You can have infinite prayer points if you're willing to engage in high APM prayer flicking. And this is fine, because we're rewarding players for their high APM. Earlier I mentioned APM alone isn't enough to determine if a design is good. If something is high APM, but those individual actions aren't meaningful, high APM starts to feel like a chore, and it very quickly becomes not fun to engage with. Let's look at Old School RuneScape's one tick prayer flicking. If you're willing to click twice every tick, you can have infinite prayer points. There's no decision making or depth to this. If you aren't doing anything else with your mouse, you can mindlessly click on your prayer and just not consume prayer points. There's no skill expression to it because you just muscle memory the timing and then you have unrestricted access to free prayer. If a boss encounter, like the Inferno, required that type of gameplay, players get annoyed because they don't find that high APM fun. But if Jagex tries to remove it, 
another set of players get annoyed because they feel it's balanced due to the high APM requirement. The core issue is that high APM, wherein those actions are not meaningful, is not fun. Content has to be designed without expecting the player makes use of something like one tick prayer flicking. But now, players who do take advantage of one tick prayer flicking immediately find any content Jagex puts out to be much easier since they just consume less prayer potions. Switchscape also has high APM meaningless inputs, where those extra inputs don't actually add much to the game experience. Let's look at the ability resonance as an example. It requires that a player is using a shield. If a player decides they need to use resonance in the next tick, they have to also input an action to first equip the shield and then use resonance. But there's no meaningful cost or thought to perform the switch action. It's just an unnecessary extra input. Is it actually any different if the game just auto-equipped the shield for you when you use resonance? I don't think so. The player always has access to resonance regardless of what their current gear set is. Resonance just requires two inputs instead of one if you're not wearing a shield already. But because that second input is meaningless, players often macro it. Because objectively, if you want to use resonance, you have to also equip a shield. Let's look at a DPS example. If you're using a two-handed staff, you don't have access to dual wield abilities. Except, actually, yes you do. It's just that the dual wield ability now requires three inputs instead of one. Two weapon switches and then the ability cast. But that's three total inputs, and three slots on your action bar. Three keybinds. Again, how different is that from the game just auto-switching my weapons for me if I try to use Greater Concentrated Blast? Switching has no meaningful cost for the player to think about. The actual gear switch input is just a trivial, costless input. And because those extra inputs aren't actually meaningful, it feels like a chore. And as a result, players complain or just don't want to deal with it. Or they use macros to turn three keybinds into one. Imagine if gear switching drained adrenaline. That's an example of a meaningful cost players might have to actually think about whether it's a good idea to pay the adrenaline cost to switch in a boss encounter where they might need that adrenaline for something else. Let's talk about complexity in the context of RuneScape. I mentioned that EOC introduced a ton of complexity, but not much depth. Complexity without depth is a huge turnoff. Combat becomes about memorizing and figuring out weird interactions that don't make intuitive sense or players just avoid that complexity by using revolution. Players can easily end up with four or more action bars with tons of inputs because so many actions, like resonance or disruption shield, require two or more individual inputs. A player's UI can end up looking incredibly complicated without actually adding anything to the game. Auto attack weaving makes literally no sense, but optimizing auto attacks can boost DPS notably. Learning how auto attacks work is unnecessary complexity and unintuitive, but it's necessary if you want to get better at combat. Switching is just another example of added complexity. Figuring out and remembering all your inputs to pull off your pre-planned rotation boosts your DPS a ton, but actually going through that process requires you to mostly do tons of reading rather than actually playing the game. Ability rotations are also unintuitive and it's not immediately obvious that you should cycle through your highest damaging abilities. You still see players with terrible revolution bars today, but they have no reason to believe their rotation is awful or that swapping two abilities could increase their DPS a ton. There's a ton of wonky, unintuitive interactions between abilities that, if many are taken advantage of, further increase your DPS. Things like ability stalling, detonate clunkiness, and other weird interactions between abilities further increase complexity without introducing skill expression opportunities for players. This doesn't even cover things like confusing damage values on tooltips, unclear combat animations, and things like a true center. Working through combat's complexities just isn't fun. I don't mean to diminish the effort and time endgame players have spent to understand how combat works and maximize their DPS. It's incredibly impressive what players are able to achieve with combat. But the point here 
is that the journey of mastering combat isn't fun for the average player. So average players are discouraged from mastering combat, which reduces the amount of players seeking really challenging PVM encounters. Lastly, and probably most controversial, EOC didn't introduce enough depth to justify all this added complexity. There's very little meaningful choice involved with EOC. Players have full, unrestricted access to whatever fits in their inventory. Switching in its current state has no depth, because there's no meaningful cost associated with the decision to switch. It's objectively correct to use Dismember with a trimmed Masterwork Spear, so Dismember becomes another thoughtless, two-keybind ability. Resonance Shield Switch lacks a meaningful cost. Players just always have access to Resonance on any given tick, because equipping the shield is a trivial input. You don't give up anything to use Resonance because you weren't going to do damage in that tick anyways. Meaningful costs introduce some player decision making as a skill expression point. A skilled player can assess a game state and recognize if it's worth paying the cost to perform an action. Abilities like Reflect and Barricade do actually have a meaningful cost. Players must have the shield equipped for the duration which cuts their DPS. But since most bosses are scripted, players can pre-plan their entire rotation for the fight, and they rarely have to deviate from it, usually only if a mistake was made. There's not enough meaningful choice or skill expressive decision making during an encounter, both because bosses are mostly scripted, and there's often an objectively correct order to use your abilities. Introducing depth isn't easy, but if depth is high, you can really tell the difference between an average PVMer and a skilled PVMer. Not because the skilled PVMer has memorized a better rotation, but the skilled PVMer would be better at analyzing a game state and making the optimal decision. But depth isn't just created by the combat system. Really, the combat system introduces a set of tools for the players that they're able to use during a boss fight. So let's talk about boss design. Bosses challenge players to use their tools effectively. It's also where we create depth for a player's tools. In RuneScape, most bosses are made difficult by increasing complexity, but there isn't much depth created by the fight. That's because many bosses in RuneScape are scripted, which means that very little depth exists because the game state of the boss is always predictable, so players never have to make meaningful decisions or assess the game state unless they make a mistake. Players can mostly pre-plan their inputs before they enter the fight. The actual boss fight itself is mostly mindless execution of your pre-planned inputs. As a result, bosses tend to be really complex and punishing for newer players, but trivial DPS dummies for experienced PVMers. Newer bosses are only difficult for a few months as players work through its complexities. But once those complexities are solved, players start to autopilot the boss. This is made worse because in RuneScape, bosses are meant to be killed thousands of times. But by your 200th kill, you've pretty much memorized the boss fight, and it turns into a really boring grind until you get the drops you're looking for. Some bosses like Telos have an enrage system which continuously increases complexity for the player and reduces their leeway for mistakes. But ultimately, once you've memorized the boss script, an enraged boss only meaningfully changes when a new mechanic is introduced, at which point the player has to rethink their pre-planned inputs because their script doesn't work anymore. I want to make a really important note here though. I'm not saying bossing in RuneScape is easy or trivial. It is incredibly challenging and skill demanding to complete challenges like 4k Telos, Archglacor, and now High Enrage Zamorak. My point isn't that it doesn't take skill to memorize and execute on these complex scripts, or that it doesn't take skill to create these complex scripts. But gaming is about having fun, and as proven by the popularity of Revolution and the general consensus on Switchscape, players do want to see less complexity. More generally, the journey to combat mastery should be a fun, engaging one. Right now, I think that journey isn't sufficiently fun for enough players. If we reduce comprehension and tracking complexity, bosses would obviously become easier. But we can then make bosses harder in ways that increase depth, 
which creates space for players to master combat in ways that are more interesting than just memorization. Let's go over Raksha as an example that really highlights why combat in RuneScape can be frustrating, complicated, shallow, and actually boring for highly skilled PVMers. Also a quick disclaimer, I don't mean to sound hypercritical of the Raksha designer. Please don't take it personally that I'm critiquing this boss. This is really meant to highlight how EOC's added complexity didn't introduce much depth to boss fights. Raksha is an entirely scripted encounter. The boss performs four auto attacks, and then a predictable special attack that can be dealt with the exact same way every single time. Because Raksha's mechanics are predictable, you never have to make meaningful choices around his mechanics. You just memorize the rotation that does the most damage, and the ticks where you need to deal with a special attack. As a result, there's no depth to Raksha, because the player never has to make any meaningful decisions. Every single game state is entirely predictable. The special attacks Raksha performs are trivial for an experienced player to deal with, and incredibly punishing for a player learning the fight, which makes Raksha an autopilot boss for experienced players and very frustrating for learning players. Even worse, Raksha has an enrage mechanic that is specifically designed to only make the fight harder if you're messing up. Raksha's enrage will increase based on the number of shadow pools in the arena at certain points in the fight. To me, this is actually one of the worst boss mechanics in the game. A player who's already struggling with the fight has to experience a much more difficult fight, to the point where it's better to just leave if Raksha hits a certain enrage point. Even worse, there's a scripted, objectively efficient point in the fight where you should be dealing with the pools. Otherwise, you can completely ignore the pools until that predictable moment. Let's go over his special attacks. His first special attack is a tail swipe. If you move backwards two steps, this attack does absolutely nothing. If you mess up, not only do you take a big chunk of damage, you're also stunned, and your prayer is knocked down. An experienced player dodging the tail swipe is trivial. They know the exact tick he will use it, but new players will struggle because they not only have no indication that Raksha is about to use a special attack, they also can't reasonably react to the tail swipe animation because it's designed to be anticipated. Raksha's next special attack is a Shadow Bomb. He first stuns the player and then drops a bomb at their location. Players are expected to prevent or clear the stun and then move. Again, because this attack is predictable, you really just have to memorize when to use Anticipation, and then you just move two steps over and continue DPSing. If you see Raksha use his third special attack, you should just leave. Raksha will absorb the shadow anima pools around the arena, which increases his enrage and deals massive damage to the player. The standard Raksha strategy is to deal enough damage to phase him before he uses a special attack, which also means that the shadow pools can be ignored until you absolutely have to deal with them. After you phase Raksha, there's a rock falling mechanic. This is the most random aspect out of the whole fight, and players do need to take care of where they're standing so they don't get comboed out. Generally, I like random ground threats because it forces players to make quick decisions to determine where the safest location is. Phase 2 of the fight is mostly the same, except one new mechanic where you just click a couple orbs. It's unique, but it's still too predictable, although sometimes the orbs can be hidden, which is really frustrating. Phase 3 is when you actually have to deal with the pools. Raksha's enrage will increase for each shadow pool every time he does a special attack so players tend to finally clear the pools at the start of this phase. A common solo strategy is to equip a Noxious Scythe and use Bladed Dive on the set of pools. I actually like this kind of switching. The player makes a meaningful trade-off to commit to fast AoE clears, but unfortunately, players can mindlessly perform this switch since you do it at the exact same point in the fight every single time. He also spawns a smaller threat, although again, it's predictable and you can deal with it the same way each time. Phase 4 of the fight is about as scripted as it gets. Every two auto attacks, Raksha performs a tail swipe if you're within melee range, so you just take two steps back. The only time players are encouraged to leave melee range is to collect shadow drops. But shadow is sent out at a very predictable moment, so again, there's no decision making involved. His major special attack is also trivial to deal with if you didn't make much mistakes throughout the fight, since it's based on his enrage. 
Raksha as an encounter is way, way too easy for experienced players. It's a total autopilot grind once you memorize the fight. Each of these mechanics are trivially dealt with by muscle memory, but players inexperienced with Raksha will struggle a ton because the mechanics are designed to be even more punishing if you haven't memorized the fight, especially the enrage mechanic. There's also a component of tracking complexity because players have to count to four to predict his next special attack. A really simple suggestion to reduce some of Raksha's complexity is to add an adrenaline bar for Raksha that shows when he's about to use a special attack. Every auto attack would increase his adrenaline by 25%. This specifically reduces tracking complexity as it becomes more clear for a player learning the fight when to expect a special attack. At the start of this video, I mentioned how EOC isn't that different from old school RuneScape. Raksha is actually a perfect example of this. EOC didn't enable the boss design of Raksha. The entire fight can be almost one-to-one -one copy to old school RuneScape. In old school RuneScape, players can prayer flick to block auto attack damage. You just don't have to flick soul split to sustain yourself because old school has 100% damage reduction. The tail swipe mechanic would be dodged in the exact same way, just move backwards on the right tick. What about the stun bomb? It's actually really simple. All we do is introduce a boss specific consumable that can be drank to incur temporary stun immunity. And now the shadow bomb is dealt with the same way. You could even force players to prepare the consumable during the fight. So old school isn't limited by not having freedom or anticipation. The shadow orb mechanic is dealt with the same way, you just click them. The lizard spawn can be frozen with ice barrage and ignored, or killed with a fast weapon like toxic blowpipe. Players don't have bladed dive for the pools, but if you duo Raksha and both players bring something like chinchampas, clearing the pools is a non-issue. You can even save your special attack to burst through his final phase shield, if that's even necessary. Even the extra action button can be ported with no problem. The shadow pieces dropped could be automatically collected as a stackable item in the player's inventory, and then consumed to grant the damage buff. The only thing EOC actually did was complicate how a player deals damage. But like I said, your damage rotation is mostly static and pre-planned. You memorize the order of abilities that works best for the boss that you're facing, and eventually it's just thoughtless muscle memory with zero decision making or depth. Eight years after the combat system is changed specifically to allow for more interesting, engaging boss designs, an endgame boss, Raksha, is released which didn't even need any of the tools EOC introduced, and could be ported to old school RuneScape almost as is. This tells me EOC didn't actually introduce enough meaningful tools for players and content developers. All we really got were defensive abilities, but popular defensive options like Disruption Shield and Power Burst of Vitality can be ported unchanged to old school. Even Resonance can be given to old school by creating a shield with Resonance as its special attack. Mobility granted by Surge and Bladed Dive can still be introduced to old school through something like Prism of Salvation. Boss taunting through Provoke is as simple as a right click option on select bosses that need it. My point is, EOC is almost exactly like old school combat, it just has more complicated damage output. But Revolution exists specifically to reduce how complicated outputting damage is and it's by far the most popular approach to combat. So what did EOC actually add to the player experience? Is it appealing enough in its current state to draw in and retain players? Is it time for a combat rework now that EOC is a decade old? We just saw the release of Zamorak, Lord of Chaos, and I'd be crazy not to talk about this fight. Feedback has been incredible, and it's been super entertaining watching players try to figure out Phase 7 on release day. I'm not going to go into a ton of detail on this fight, but I do have a few interesting observations. When EOC nerfed protection prayers, it was because boss designs had a hard time working around them. They were simply too powerful, and every single boss had to have some sort of deals damage through prayer mechanic. Thus, prayers were nerfed to their current 50% protection with EOC to give designers breathing room. 
And yet this exact same argument is now being brought up against defensive abilities. They're simply too powerful. Players have so many efficient, powerful, even costless defensive options available to them that Zamorak has to have built-in mechanics which ignore player defensives for him to become sufficiently difficult. That sounds kind of familiar. This highlights how EOC fundamentally doesn't even meet its initial goals. It created the exact same problem it meant to solve. Zamorak's enrage system is a consequence of player DPS disparity. Because understanding all the nuances of combat increases player throughput dramatically, there's just way too big of a DPS gap between an average player and a skilled PVMer. So long as this disparity exists, we will never see a truly challenging PVM encounter that doesn't rely on some form of enrage system. Even the rune system, where players can choose their order for the boss, mostly increased complexity. There's some depth as players choose what buff makes the most sense, but you ultimately enter the fight with a pre-planned rune order, and there's no possible game state during the encounter that might make you reconsider your planned order. If the fight was far less predictable, your rune order could have been a skill expressive meaningful choice. The best PVMers would assess the state of how the encounter is going and select the rune that they think would be most optimal for them given the unpredictable game state. But again, the Zamorak fight is mostly predictable, so players plan their strategy before they go in, and they have no reason to change it once they're mid-fight. It's not that this is bad design, I just think it's a missed opportunity to introduce more depth and create skill expression beyond muscle memory and script design. But overall, Zamorak has been a really successful piece of content. It is difficult to create in-depth bosses because EOC doesn't give you much to work with. So huge kudos to the team behind this content. You guys did a fantastic job. Lastly, I'm going to draw a comparison with Lost Ark's boss encounters. It's easy to compare Lost Ark to RuneScape because they're both click-to-move, ability-based combat systems. Similar to Zamorak, Lost Ark has been setting up certain characters as epic foes known as Legion Commanders. Players finally take on these Legion Commanders through Legion Raids, content that is often praised by players as being the main reason to play Lost Ark. An upcoming NA Legion Raid for a foe known as Brelshaza will be launched soon. This Legion Raid has a hard mode that is made up of six phases, where each phase of the boss is functionally a separate encounter with separate loot rewards. This fight is considered so difficult, most players won't be able to clear it. When I thought about Zamorak and how we are finally going to face a god for the first time, I expected a thematically epic encounter. While our fight with Zamorak, relative to the other content in the game, is pretty impressive, Phase 7 didn't thematically blow me away like I thought it would. Zamorak just kind of stands there and does the same attacks he did throughout the rest of the fight. Take a look at this clip of Phase 6 of Brelshaza Hard Mode's Legion Raid. Thematically, look at how this boss's mechanics remind you that she is a commander of a legion of demons, and this is an epic showdown. Obviously RuneScape has limitations given that it's a 20 year old game, and the point here isn't RuneScape is a crap game, go play others. But because Lost Ark's combat system is intuitive and easy to learn, they can justify development time spent on epic, incredibly challenging, difficult content because players are already engaging with all that their combat system has to offer. Players will fail this raid because they're just not good enough. But the key point here is getting good at combat isn't about just memorizing rotations or making sense of unintuitive complexities. It's an application of Lost Ark's base combat design, proper skill usage, character control, and knowledge of the fight. 
APM in Lost Ark gets pretty high too, but each of those inputs feel meaningful, so players don't have a reason to complain about it. But there aren't a bunch of hidden, weird interactions or mechanics to memorize and learn, which is the huge issue with RuneScape. Of course, Lost Ark is full of its own set of issues. It does combat really well, but other things like dailies and progressions can really turn players off. RuneScape excels at things like its skill system and progression curve. But the point of all this is that RuneScape seriously needs to improve its combat system for the average player, which would then justify creating truly challenging content for endgame PVMers. Please remember that I'm not suggesting we should make combat easier, or that an average player should be outputting the same DPS as a skilled player. It's quite the opposite. I want to see a combat system where the difference between a highly skilled player and an average player is obvious in a way that's more interesting than just memorizing rotations, high APM switching, or knowledge of combat quirks. Skilled PVMer should be a player who's able to make optimal decisions during a fight and express skills like character control and ability usage that goes beyond muscle memory. I want to highlight the key takeaways from this discussion. First, Switchscape is disliked because it just increases complexity without adding much depth. But EOC fundamentally shares this problem of high complexity. Reducing combat's complexity makes it more accessible and enjoyable for a ton of players, and Revolution is proof of this. Reducing combat's complexity doesn't mean making the game easier. Increasing depth and creating meaningful skill expression opportunities allows highly skilled players to show off their mastery of combat in more interesting ways. The journey to mastering combat in RuneScape should be fun and intuitive for the average player. High APM isn't necessarily a good thing. We should be mindful when increasing APM by ensuring those individual actions are meaningful and move away from muscle memory high APM. Bosses should feel engaging, with players making meaningful choices that incorporate their combat tools. Comprehension and tracking complexity for bosses should be reduced, and more opportunities to make skillful decisions should be baked into boss designs with less scripted fights. So, what's my design proposal? How can we address these problems and improve the combat experience? Some players feel the correct solution is for Jagex to better teach the combat system to players. I personally don't think this is the right solution. We've had versions of combat tutorials before, but combat is so complicated and unintuitive that tutorials wouldn't be enough. The community does a fantastic job of creating combat tutorials, but reading through PVME guides just highlights how complicated combat is. To be honest, I don't have a proposal this time. This isn't an easy problem to properly define and address without disrupting the fundamentals of combat. I struggle to even create this episode's script because there's so many different opinions on this topic and different personal understandings of what makes a combat system fun for you. There's people who will disagree with every single part of this video, and that's perfectly valid. There's also people who are understandably worried that Jagex might react to this type of feedback by making combat too easy. The point of this episode was to reframe the conversation around Switchscape. Really what we're discussing is what does it mean to become a master of combat, and what does that journey towards mastery look like? Is it a fun journey that players are excited to go through? Is it spending hours reading PVME essays to make sense of things like auto attacks? Is it intuitive enough to learn over time by just playing the game? I'm hoping this episode gives you the language you need to better communicate your feelings and thoughts on topics like Switchscape. The passion behind RuneScape is actually incomparable. There's so many people out there who've played RuneScape before, but may have been turned off by EOC's complexity and haven't touched the game since. Or maybe they exclusively stick to old school. Or maybe old school's too far back for them and they move on to other games. It's really hard to pitch a full combat rework given the results of the last one. Is it even possible to explore a combat rework at this point? I have a vision of a modernized combat system that all RuneScape players past, present, old school, could recognize and fall in love with. A combat system that is fun, engaging, intuitive, and satisfying for everyone. A combat system with a mastery journey that players are excited to take on. A combat system that enables deep, incredibly challenging PVM encounters without relying on enrage.
a combat system where players invite their friends to come play with them because it's so fun. I think this is possible. Chasing this vision of a better combat system is my major motivation for continuing the Project Combat series. Next episode we'll explore a topic I touched on in episode 1, player satisfaction, fantasy, and combat visuals. Until next time, thanks so much for watching.